okay, uh, this is sort of a sort of general overarching um, question. When will Black Spectrals have new tutorials for the ARE 5.0? Uh, and then a uh, kind of related question, can you discuss the difficulty between ARE 4.0, ARE 5.0, and the differences between the vignettes and some of the new graphic uh, systems that they're going to be uh, talking about in 5.0? Uh, so I'm going to bring Mark in for this because we've recently been through a number of discussions, both uh, between us but also with NCARB. Uh, and we have a longer um, uh, webinar tutorial thing that's, uh, that focuses on this, so you should definitely check that out. But sort of for the short version, um, uh, let's bring in Mark to talk about when uh, the um, tutorials will be available for ARE 5.0. Mark, do you have any wise words you'd like to say about that? Yeah, so we're going to focus on the two exams that are part of the um, kind of the overlap transition, um, the five test strategy. Um, so those are going to very likely um, be available sooner than the other uh, uh, sooner than the other uh, courses for ARE 5. Um, so you'll see those two exam, uh, I'm sorry, those two courses for those two exams that are involved in the, the five test uh, transition strategy. Those will be available in um, sometime between August and September. And you guys should just know that in addition to building a, a full curriculum for ARE 5, a video tutorial based one, we'll also be developing um, uh, additional tools uh, to really round out the entire offering. So there's lots of stuff that's going on. Um, needless to say, there's, we're, we're, we're <laughs> quite busy because yes. uh, there's lots of great stuff that we're It's very exciting through. though. I think it's a great opportunity. We're, we're very happy and excited that the, the switchover is happening because it gives us this opportunity to kind of focus on it. And so that's great. Um, so kind of regarding the specific question um, about 4.0 versus 5.0, um, so neither one is not necessarily better than the other. Uh, it really depends on who you are and where you are in the process. There are differences though. So like I said, there are other places where we go more in depth, but we'll just do a sort of short description here. Right now under 4.0, uh, as everybody knows, the sort of gist of the situation is I have a whole series of individual exams about individual topics. Now, because it's architecture, any one individual topic actually has a tendency to sort of slip and slide over from one topic to another. Uh, for example, if you're talking about soil, uh, are you really talking about construction systems or are you talking about site planning? Uh, so even though it's in these individual silos, it still has a lot of slippage between one exam and another. But the gist of it is I have uh, an exam for structures, I have an exam for systems, I have an exam for contracts, I have an exam for site planning. Uh, and that uh, has the benefits for the person taking the exam that, okay, I can just sit down for three weeks and just totally focus on structures or totally focus on systems. Uh, and you know, focus on that, take the exam, hope for the best, and then move on to the next thing. So there's certain big advantages to that. 5.0 is organized totally differently. So 5.0, instead of being organized in those silos, is actually essentially organized much more like an or a typical architectural project. So uh, it has two sort of outlier exams, one that is sort of about how you run a practice, uh, and the other which is sort of a more of a kind of general um, uh, how, kind of in general, how you run a, a, a project. So I have practice management and project management as these sort of two sort of outliers. But then there's four in a row that really are actually kind of logically thought of as in a row. Uh, and the first one is at the very beginning of a project. Uh, so you've just been awarded the project and now you're looking at the site, you're looking at the surveys, you're looking at like, well, what are the basic cost assumptions for, for this? So how, uh, you know, how are we going to sort of think about that? But along with that, you would also be thinking about, all right, so you know, for this kind of project and this kind of location, I wonder what kind of structural system we would use. Is this going to be a concrete system? Is it going to be a long span system? Is it going to be a steel system? Uh, so it would be basic kind of structural, basic questions about how you would approach a project. Similarly with uh, systems, you'd be thinking about, all right, what, you know, we're right at the beginning of the project, what are our, our first assumptions given the program, given the location, given the sort of marketing that's local to that place, all of those kinds of questions. 
So it's in the beginning of a project, but it touches on contracts, touches on systems, touches on uh, structures, all of those things. Okay, now we get to the next one of the four. That's going to be kind of that design development kind of realm. You're really uh, kind of in the schematic design, design development. You're really starting to get into the detail. So now you're going to have all those same basic questions about structures, about systems, about uh, how it fits to the site plan. But now we're into the detail. Now we're starting to talk about, uh, well, how big a parking lot is that? And how many cars can I fit in that parking lot? Uh, we we, maybe we chose long span. All right, did we choose uh, long span uh, steel truss or did we choose long span uh, concrete uh, 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 precast or something? Um, so you're into the more of the kind of uh, specifics of the situation for that, that second one of those four exams. And then the third one is, all right, now you're effectively making the, uh, the bid set, the, the permit set. And so now we're talking about actual details, you know, how many uh, bolts, uh, maybe it's a structures question where you have to figure out how many bolts are needed, um, or uh, is this um, steel beam uh, wide flange going to meet the needs of the, of the situation? You're getting into the like, really specific, uh, can you now build it details. Well, same is going to be true with the contracts, same with the system, same with the... So clearly what you're really talking about here is those three exams going across from, from the beginning to the middle to the, to the end of the architectural process are talking about everything. Uh, they're just focused on the sort of timeline of the project. The fourth one of those is, all right, now we're in the actual construction, and so it's the construction administration end of things. So there's going to be contracts questions for that. There's going to be structural questions for that. There's going to be systems questions for that that will be appropriate to that moment in the time of a project. So, all right, 4.0 silos, uh, 5.0 is more about the sort of stream of how a normal architectural project goes forward. Therefore, if you're somebody that really feels like I need to focus on, like I need to take, just read structures for a couple of weeks, I just don't get it, I really need to spend time doing that, well then 4.0 is going to make more sense for you. Uh, because you're going to have that ability to really focus in. Same with systems, same with all those contracts, all of those same, same questions uh, hold. If you're somebody who is maybe has a little more experience and you're kind of, you feel comfortable with the sort of fluidity of uh, talking about like a basic idea of structures, moving into it as a, a more detailed version, um, and then getting into the, the actual, you know, calculations and details, and same with uh, systems and same with contracts, understanding the sort of a general way that you would approach contracts in the beginning. Uh, and then there's a sort of meaningful uh, differences that you, how you would talk about it as you move through the project. If that sort of fluidity feels comfortable to you, well then 5.0 is absolutely sort of the right choice. Um, I actually think it's a, a very positive move on NCARB's part. I think that the switch to 5.0 makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's always felt a little false the way that the exams lined up with actual the way that the um, that the sort of world works in architecture, and I think the 5.0 is a is a noble attempt to to make that happen. I'm just not totally convinced that it actually is going to make your life easier uh, when you're studying for it. So I, I think you need to sort of figure it out for yourself. How do I feel about this? Where do I fit into all of this? Uh, what makes sense for the way that I study, what makes sense for my background and, and how it fits. Um, and over the next uh, month or two, uh, there'll be lots more information. One of the things that's probably important to say is that the 5.0 will be starting to come uh, online at the end of this year. Um, they, I believe they still haven't given us an exact date, but presumably if you think of it as kind of Thanksgiving-ish, um, maybe a little after that. Uh, and then there'll be at least 18 months of uh, overlap where both uh, 4.0 and 5.0 are offered. So if, you, if you're in 4.0 now, you, can, you have plenty of time to finish it out in 4.0. If you decide you want to wait till 5.0, it'll start soon. One quick thing to say, which uh, shows up in one of these questions somewhere, but maybe we'll just talk about it now, is there's this uh, idea that you can jump, uh, do three of the exams in 4.0, and then do two of the exams in 5.0 uh, that will actually uh, cover effectively all of the topics. So 
you go from 4.0, which is seven exams, to 5.0, which is six exams, but you can actually do it in five exams if by following that. Uh, there's other places where we have it all written out. You can follow that, take a look for it. The one thing I would say for those folks who are interested in that idea is I think it's very clever. I think it's very smart that NCARB offers that. Um, I think it's, it's uh, the right move and it's very clever. Um, however, those two exams are gonna be monster exams. Uh, and if you are used to the 4.0 kind of system, uh, it'll be a bit of a surprise uh, when you uh, come across those because those will be those two main ones uh, of the kind of design development into uh, CDs. And there's just a lot of information, systems, structures, contracts, all those things. And you're gonna have to be studying for all of that in order to take those two exams. And actually, let me add that um so those are the two exams that I was referring to. So we're going to lead um, and publish those courses in August, September. Um, but to tack onto what Mike was saying, um, uh, you know, the the exam is is changing pretty dramatically. Like the question, there are some of the question types are the same. So some of them are multiple choice questions, but they're actually introducing uh, two or three new question types to replace the vignettes. Right. So, so the vignettes are gone. The, vign the the full vignettes are going to be completely gone but then there are these new systems. And that's why I think, to Mike's point, um, studying for ARE 5 is gonna be, you're gonna have to uh, spend a lot of time kind of understanding those new question types and, and how to answer them. It is kind of a different ball game, so. Yeah, and if, you're, if you've tr started taking 4.0 and you feel very comfortable with the vignettes and you're doing well with them, I would say finish it off in 4.0. Like, it's sort of the devil you know. Uh, if you've been having trouble with the vignettes, because maybe I know some people have had difficulty, they just, like, they just can't, kind of vibe into it, uh, or they have uh, you know, physical difficulties kind of maneuvering the, the very awkward software. Um, if you're having trouble with the vignettes, well, maybe you wait till five. Um, but in general, my suggestion is just do it in 4.0, get it done. Um, so much more to say about that. We've got other places where we say uh, various things along those lines, uh, but uh, we're happy to answer more questions at the end as well if you have any more.